Hello and welcome back. Playing with that blue DMU last week reminded me that I tried to include an area like this on the layout when I put it together to utilise a, a Y point. I didn't manage to make that work, I just didn't have the space to get that to work properly. We'll just put this to one side and we'll have a look at the tracks. So here, here is the Y point, so I haven't managed to use one of these on the layout at all. And that's R437, that was available 1963 to 71. And then we would have needed a couple of these R486 curves just to get around the platform. And again, if you have a look at the picture in the top right hand corner there, you see where I wanted to put it. There just wasn't room to get it across here. It would have just fouled on the elevated section. I've just pulled out a continuing mask there and laid in the Y point and a couple of those curves so you can see really how tight that comes in. So that would, we would have been having height problems here with the elevated section. And for the siding I have got in, I've used this small radius curve there and this wagon is so tight with there, it only just goes under and it's really, really very close to the elevated piers. So I, I could have put the Y point further back down, but I would have lost so much in length, I wouldn't have really got any practical station length in there. So maybe on the next layout. When Super 4 track first became available in 1962, there was no Y point. We had to wait till 1963 for that to become available. The same year that the turntable seems to have shown up too, and also the extra long straight here and it's just over 26 inches long. We'll just pop this down and have a look at the Y point. There we go, it's a fairly sturdy looking thing, isn't it? But provided you keep these things in good condition, and this goes for the, the standard points too, they work very, very well. Just have a quick look on the back, look at how basic those contacts are. And then we've got the model number there, R437, Trying's name, made in England. You can see the point motor just clipped in there and that could be clipped in the other side too so I suppose if you had more space on your layout and your track network it might make more sense to have it fitted one side than the other. This one's in fairly good shape we've still got the half sleeper ends present on all the track ends really nice looking thing. We'll just pop that down and we'll have a swift look at the box. Now this one came in a Trying Hornby box, so it's slightly later. And then the catalogue we're looking at here, really bold graphics again. Now we can see on the end of the box, there's the catalogue number, R437, Y point, there's a seller tape still attached there. And then we've got the price. I know at the end of last week's video, I said we'd have a look at something else from the late Trying Hornby period. Then I got to thinking about other things that I haven't managed to get into the layout. A footbridge, for instance, there isn't a single one on this layout. I just haven't managed to find a place to put it with a continuary. And then I remembered that I'd wanted to try and get a wide point in here uh, in an island station. And I never managed that either. So I thought I'd have another play with this. And I do have a second one which is in much worse condition. It's been in the wars a little bit. We'll see how we do with this. Now we're going to bring this along onto the inside line for that crossover, looking really nice there. And then we'll just bring this into the siding here and we'll have a look just how close that comes into the elevated section there. Let's look at that front end, nearly clips that pier there. I think the L1 or the B12, they would definitely clip that pier. We'll just take her out and then switch point one. And away we go again. Now we're going to move on round to the station and pick up the other two car set. Now sadly when I was experimenting with these I couldn't get the, the two sets to run very nicely together. The other set that's sitting there at the station has smooth wheels on the model and seems to have a, a much more lively motor than this one and it kept causing derailments and all sorts of problems going through the points. So what I did was take out the motor bogey and put in a spare bogey, or not a spare one, one I pinched from one of the green DMUs. And we'll just have a look at that. So I smooth things out by pinching the rear bogey from the diesel trailer car, R158, from the green version I have. We'll just pop the box down. And I've already unclipped the underframe detail, which holds it in place. You can see there, we'll just take that away. And we can see the little stepped recesses here 
and that rear bogey just pulls straight out and it's just clipped in at the other end. Interestingly, if we look inside we could see we've got provision there, we could have a motor bogey fitted in here quite easily. And that just adds to the mystery of why we've got both model numbers for the power car and the dummy car on here. Yeah, clearly the moulding for this is for the dummy or trailer car as it is. Quite interesting, I'm not sure whether they ever had units with motor bogies in both ends, but certainly looks like it could have been done. So we'll pop that down and have a look at the blue one. And as I said earlier, this one's been in, been in the wars a bit. It's definitely got a piece of molding just missing off the front under the bump, under the front buffer there. You can see that missing. We'll have a look and it's got the, the smooth wheels and this motor is just so much more powerful than the other one. The other one's pretty good but this one just outstrips it, causes the whole train to keep leaping off the rails. So we'll just pull off the roof and have a look inside. Now let's see the other damage there. This was just shattered when I first got this and there was just enough of it to glue back together and make it work. So I've already loosened this, we'll take it out. There we go. Let's have a quick look at the motor. So it's in pretty good shape. Certainly does the trick, but a little bit too well. Let's see, we've got the, the smooth wheels. Fairly tidy condition, we'll just pop that down. If I turn it over, we can then just clip this in. Sadly, I haven't got a matching green one. We've got to take that under frame detail out there. Now this again is slightly damaged. It's missing one of its clips, so it's just got blue tack holding it together. Very technical. So we'll just clip that in. And it just needs to snap into position. There we go. And we'll just put that under frame detail back on there. So that was a temporary fix to the, the trains keeping leaping off the track there. So from the side you can't really tell, but you've definitely got a different moulding for these power cars to the dummy cars. So I wonder what Triang's thinking was on that, whether they had further plans. Since recording that last piece of video we've just seen, Andrew Fan has commented on last week's video about the R603 set in which I was also confused about the numbering in the bottom of these models. He's pointed out to me that Trying had come up with a very ingenious mould that had inserts which could be changed to produce either the power car or the dummy car. Sounds like a really great idea, I'd love to have seen that tool. We're just going to bring them to a stop here and then we'll have a look at that footbridge I couldn't get on the layout. So there we've got the old R71 footbridge, they're really nice things, but they're designed to go across just the two tracks. Now these were available from 1953 and stayed in the catalogue I think till 1970, so that's a very long running item. You can just see from the, looking from the other angle there, you can see it's just balanced on the, on the catenary there quite precariously, but you can see it doesn't quite span the three tracks. So I suppose what I could do is get a couple of, couple of bridges and cut them and make one to span across the gap, but I've just never got around to that. To get the bridge to go over the catenary, I need to chock it up by about 12 millimetres. And that's, that's how it would look. Maybe we'll get that on the next layout, on a section of it without any catenary, and maybe at a station which is more suitable. This particular bridge comes in a Triang Railways box. It's catalogue number R71. Footbridge box is in fairly tidy condition. A little bit black and dusty in places. So we'll just pop that down and have a look at the bridge. These were available over the years with a variety of different advertising posters on them. They really are quite smart. They are quite fragile and they do tend to flake away. Once they've started to flake, if you catch them with your fingers, they just continue coming away, which is a bit of a shame. So they're very delicate. The bridge is molded in a number of parts. And we've got these smoke deflectors, which are separately fitted. We've got the step supports and we've got the bridge supports here. Just looking closely here, I'll just slide this smoke deflector across. We've got Triang's name 
and then made in England and can we see that R71B and then on the bottom of the steps there R71A and then on the other step just looking in here we've got R71A and then the bridge supports themselves they've got R71C so a slightly different part number on each part of the bridge which is quite interesting I don't think the, the bridge support or sorry the step supports have a separate part number or the smoke deflectors a really great thing very popular I think they made tens of thousands of these moving smoothly off now in the opposite direction and just the one motor bogey there pushing the majority of that train forwards and she does a really good job of it just look at that coming from there and that wonderful sound of those ribbed wheels on the steel track now we're headed for the crossover here onto the outside line just look how well behaved that is with the two motor bogeys in that simply jumped off the line like a concertina there now i think i'm going to leave you this week with page 22 from the 1969 catalogue which seems to be the last year that the footbridge appeared. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.